Hello, hello, happy Friday, Friday. I am so excited to chat with my amazing guest today, Amy. We're just going to, oh, there she is. All right, girlfriend, got to add you on here. Okay, now I have to remember how to do this. <laughs> this is always the way it goes. Yes, you requested. Go on. Me in three, two, one. Oh, come on. Come on. There it goes. <laughs> Yay! Oh Hi. my goodness, look at that beautiful background with the with the plants. I just my love jungle. It. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I love it so so much. Oh, it's amazing. Good morning, Sheila. It's so so nice to see you. Oh my gosh, this is just so exciting. First of all, Amy, I'm so happy that you're here. I sent you a message and then I think I sent it too late. Pronounce your last name for me. Baumgarten. Yep, that's it. Baumgarten. Yes. Okay. Um, my maiden name was always a mess for people, so I always like to ask. Um, amazing. So I am here today with Amy Baumgarten. She, oh my gosh, well, I'm. there's going to be so much. We're going to have to try to jam this into our 30-minute chat today. But she essentially is a holistic movement coach, and she specializes in perinatal wellness, pre and postpartum. So I'm so excited to talk to her today. She's going to share a bunch of different tips. We're going to go over what the deep core is, why it matters, a little bit of basic anatomy, and then she's going to give us a couple exercises that we can work on. So I'm so, so excited to have you here today. So little happy. Friday, Friday dance. As we're chatting, if anybody who's with us has any questions, drop the, drop the questions in there and we'll get to them. But let me throw it over to you. Go ahead, introduce yourself and share a little bit about home body movement. Thank you so much, Jess. I'm so excited to talk to you today and to talk to your, your peeps. Um, so home body movement was born of my love for moving the body from a deeper sense of uh, self. I'm a dancer. I'm a performer. I'm someone who's always looked outward for validation for um, who I am. And over the Ooh, years, right? Deep. Who, who hasn't? Who doesn't, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. um, and over the years, I've, um, I went through a process from dance to Pilates to yoga to somatic work and um, bridge them all together to create something that's both um, functional and basic foundational movement that helps strengthen the body, um, but that also helps us connect to our, our core um, in more ways than one. So I, I love talking about the deep core um, and that's for anybody with a pelvis to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I love working with moms. And so I have a great uh, um, client base of people who've given birth, people who are in the process of, um, or, you know, they're pregnant, or they're in the process of preparing for birth. Um, so that's a, the, one of the reasons I love that community is because they're aware of their core. Completely. <laughs> their core has been expanded or is being expanded. Um, and there's, there's a lot of mystery there. Um, but I if work with that. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say, if you don't mind, before we dive in a little bit more to the, what the deep core is and how we can work on it, can you just touch on, because you're not yet a mom, you are like me, you're a mom in training and share as much or as little as you want, just so that those who are listening kind of know where you're coming from. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm pulling up my pictures here. Um, so this is my definition of the deep core. Oh, no, no. First, if you don't mind, go into who, who you, your, like, your background. I know you're on oh. your motherhood journey. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Um, if you'd like, as much or as little as you want to share. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I have been married for almost two years. And um, we, you, you know, I have been working with moms for close to seven years, um, specifically, but I've been teaching for over a decade. Um and so I, I knew it was, I was on the path. Um, my husband and I started trying, and we actually had our, a miscarriage back in the fall of 2019. So I have experienced a kind of birth, um, and I just want to acknowledge anyone who has gone through miscarriage, 
um, or pregnancy loss, that that is a postpartum condition. I kind of wish I had known that at the time. Um, But over my healing process, I I did get to really clarify that anyone who has miscarried has gone through carrying a soul and and, um, a postpartum experience. So I honor that experience um, and I hold those people too. Um, I just, I wanted to thank you for doing that because I know that, you know, I'm, I'm more and more trying to share everybody's story. Of course, I focus on aspiring moms and mamas in training, and that includes those who have gone through loss. And I think it's important sometimes when we jump on here and we talk about the things that are great and that we're so excited about, but then we see beautiful people like I know Sheila, who has shared her story with me and, I want people like her and others to know that this is not always an easy journey and it's inspiring to see you who are coming up and sharing how you've sort of navigated it and turned it into a positive focus. So before we go into that definition, I just want to get to Sheila's question. Um, I don't know if you know, she was wondering if you have any recommendations for a pelvic floor therapist or someone in that I, that vein who happens to be in California, kind of near San Francisco. And if you don't have anyone on the top of your head, maybe you can just connect with her. I can connect you too. Yes. Um, you know what? I think I do have some people in San Francisco Bay Area. I would have to look that up though. And yeah. So I'm happy to follow up with you for Sheila. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Sheila, send her a DM or send me a reminder and we'll connect. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it. Welcome, Lisa, to Story of Doula. It's so nice to see you. Okay, so I am with Amy Baumgarten today. She is unbelievable, and she's going to bring us into a basic overall explanation of deep core, why it's important, and how it can help us stay strong, especially in the perinatal and postpartum phase of our life. So go ahead. Okay, well, this is my definition of the deep core. It is the community of muscles that surround our deep center. And our deep center is this magical, mystical place where all of our movement arrives to and comes from. And if you think about um, a glass of water, like if you take a mason jar with a lid and you shake that glass, the water inside is the deep center this Mm. wild, expansive, expressive, um, free movement. And the jar, the glass itself, is the container around which the water has a chance to move freely. Because if if there wasn't a container, the water would just spill out and it would drop to the floor and collapse. So we have this beautiful mechanism that holds our center, allowing for that, that, um, the impulses of our movement to arrive from them. And then the container of muscles, and I'll explain in a second, are the ones that are able to um, support that free movement. Ideally, right? We all have mm. some sticky patterns. Um, the deep, so the deep core is combined, uh, it's comprised of four muscles. And they, like I was saying, they kind of shape, are shaped like a box around our center. And so here is my diagram for you. Oh, yes, I saw this on your website. Love that. Yeah. And so we have our torso. So this little guy here is our breathing muscle. We'll go into that a little bit more. But it's just nice to see the whole thing. And then here is the pelvic floor or the, the bottom of our pelvic bowl, the muscles that sling between tailbone and pubic bone. And then this whole area are the band of abdominal muscles that wrap around the spine. So from one side of the spine around to the other side of the spine. Mm. And then on the back end, we have these, if you can see these kind of pink braided muscles that run through the spinal column. So the muscles that hold up our spine, not are not like the muscles that you feel in your back. You're like, Oh, I'm sorry. No, the ones that are really deep and threaded through the vertebrae that actually are, that hold up our spine. So, Mm. These are, when we're talking about the deep core, these are our postural muscles as well. These are what we use. If we're using these properly and in collaboration, that's why I call it a community, (laughs) then we have effortless posture for somebody, you know, aside from childbirth and aside from pregnancy, you have effortless posture as a human when you have these muscles all coordinated. So 
I want to just break this down a little bit. I hope it's not too confusing. Yeah, yeah please do. Yeah. Um, so the top where our breathing muscle is, right? That is, I'm going to show you another picture. Love illustrations. I just love it. it makes it so it, much easier to understand. Right? When we can visualize, we can move. And mm -hmm. that's my philosophy. So anatomy is not like kind of dull and boring. Hopefully we bring it to life with our movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this billowing pink dome here is our diaphragm. And, and that was the top arch you were talking about initially. Yes, that right. is, that is this right here from the side view, yep. like a simplified view. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, the diaphragm is kind of like, it's a horizontal smooth muscle that it's, it's edges. It's like a circular pancake and the edges all attached to the bottom ribs on the inside of our rib cage. So it's like the floor of our rib cage, just like we have a pelvic floor. We have this floor on the bottom of our rib cage. So I'm gonna just tip down a little bit so you can see, hopefully see my, my bottom ribs. If you wanna, anyone can do this, we can put our fingers kind of wrapped around the bottom most ribs and you, you have to kind of find them because sometimes we think they're kind of up here and really mm. they're a lot lower. So kind of dig into your waist a little bit mm -hmm. and then see if you can send your breath, right? So when I say send your breath or focus your breath, it means that I'm thinking about this area of my body while I'm breathing. And that will direct the breath into this area. And so if my hands are on my ribs, as you inhale, see if you can feel the movement of expansion and condensing. Okay, so this yeah. is what's happening, right? The inhale is gonna expand that diaphragm muscle and the exhale is gonna bring it closed. Now that's only one part of it. That one's the, probably the one we're more familiar with. And when you're pregnant, you don't feel this. Yeah. So you'll hear a lot of shortness of breath, especially mm -hmm. as baby is coming up toward the diaphragm. That is because of the, the center of our pancake. So if we've got the edges connected to the ribs and they're spreading and narrowing, the center is lifting and lowering like a pump. Mm. And it goes like this on an inhale. Exhale. Opposite of kind of what you would think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Usually we think. Yeah. Raise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's often what happens when we're pregnant is baby is pushing upward. So we think to get more breath, let's do this. Right. Right. And that actually is going to hinder the, the muscles between the ribs and that, that kind of open and spread the ribs, it's going to kind of keep them stuck. It's also pushing them forward. Yeah. Ideally, what we want is for a three-dimensional expansion and yeah. condensing, right? Everyone's probably seen one of these. I love that. Great visual. So it's not, it's not just here. Mm -hmm. It's not just here. And so when we think about, and this is also a wonderful way to ground, whether you're pregnant or you're postpartum mm -hmm. or whether you're trying like, mm -hmm. like we are, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you have some anxiety, right? The movement down of your inhale, receiving the breath is a downward and widening action. And then as we exhale, the center just rises up and the ribs kind of fall in like you're like, as if you were closing an umbrella. Mm. So would you say, how, how can we work on this short of just sitting there, or is it as simple as it is, what did you say, just sitting there and thinking about breathing into our sides that I'm sure can just, I mean, I need to sit down for five minutes and practice this daily, but is there anything else along with that that you would tag along as essential to anybody? I mean, of course, people who are pregnant or postpartum. But anybody, are there other elements we should tie along to that? Are you speaking specifically about breath or about the deep core as a whole? Deep core as a whole. Yes. So if you can get, the reason I talk about this first is because if you can get the breath to move down and wide, 
Mm. Um, and get that rhythm, then you have the rest of the deep core rhythm. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to talk about the pelvic floor next. One quick little thing I'll just share before you get into the pelvic floor. So yeah. someone else um, introduced me to this idea of breathing and it had to do with an exercise class that I was taking. And I was blown away about it too, because oftentimes as women, we think that we breathe in and we do a crunch and like, Ugh, you know, and like crunch. But when we breathe just the way we normally breathe and we don't think about it, we kind of create a dome with our abs, you know, kind of domes up like a mountain. And then she was telling me how, like, when you do that, you're, it's not good for your pelvic floor and your deep core. So I've been thinking a lot when I work out nowadays about breathing into my sides, the way you just described. But it's funny because luckily during this pandemic, we've had to wear a mask because I'm focusing so hard on it. I'm at the gym and I'm literally going like this. <sighs> I'm, like, I'm thinking sideways, sideways, sideways. So there's a good practice if you're home or you have a mask on at the gym, just think. Ah. <laughs> I like that. I like that technique. And everyone, everyone has various techniques for that. Absolutely. I just like, I just like touch because it can, yeah. like, it can imagine opening. Mm -hmm. So a couple of rounds of that can really go a long way, as mm -hmm. you're saying, like it mm -hmm. just, it just really helps. That doming we're going to talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. And that, that relates also to diastasis recti yes. post, post birth. So we, we can talk about that. I just want to quickly talk about the pelvic floor, which please is, do. could be, you know, a weekend. Oh yeah. Time. We can talk about that forever. <laughs> Here is my little model. Um, it's, it's a pelvis model sort of, it's a, a little bowl, right? Our pelvis is a bowl. We can look inside the bowl and I've got my, my pubic bones are here on this end, tailbone on this end, the white stuff. And then all these colors are the muscles. We've got our um, vagina and anus, the sphincters there. Um, and you can kind of see if I look, if you look down in, this is a little bit of an aside, but it's important. All of these are our hip muscles. Mm not just our inner hip muscles, but our rotator muscles that are found on the outside that turn our leg open and turn them closed. So you can see how closely connected they are to the pelvic floor. Yeah. Yeah, these are two. These, these here are the pelvic floor muscles, and then we've got them. So all of it is working together when we're working our hips three-dimensionally, we're working our pelvic floor and vice versa. Mm. But as you can kind of see, if we're looking at it from the side, also I can flip it over and you can see these these other muscles. So we have two layers of pelvic floor muscles, right? Mm -hmm. Just like the diaphragm up here, okay? The muscles here go down and wide, mm. up and in, right? And you might've heard that. People might know about the, the lifting of the blueberry. Right. Right, picking up a blueberry. Um, the, so the two layers, this layer down here are the, are the layer of muscles that connect pubic bone to tailbone, and our two sitting bones. So oftentimes when I'm working with clients or I'm working in a workshop, I'm gonna, we're gonna first locate these, right? Finding your sit bones, right? If mm -hmm. you don't know what your sitting bones are, just wiggle your hips on a hard surface and you'll yeah. feel those bones, right? There's a lot of attachments there. And then a lot of times we don't know where our pubic bone is mm -hmm. <laughs> or where our tailbone is. So yeah. it's, it's really nice to just use your hands to touch and locate those bones and then try to bring them together. Mm. Right. And a Kegel, I've done a, I, I was telling you before, I've done a, a class on this too. The Kegel, yeah. right, is really only one part of the full range of motion of our pelvic floor. Just as we have to in, uh, so with the diaphragm, it's the breathing muscle, muscle, it's different, but just as we have to inhale, we have to exhale, right? right? Just as we have to engage the pelvic floor, we have to release Relax. and spread it. Yes. And we have to, mm -hmm. So I like to use, um, stretchy bands to show that pelvic floor isn't just like squeezing and letting go, squeezing and letting go, mm -hmm. but it's engaging and lifting, connecting to the diaphragm. And then this is the kind of expansion energy, right? It's a, mm -hmm. a resilient kind of um, rebounded energy of our muscles. It's not just like, let go. Yeah, 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 exactly. So one thing I like uh, folks to try is when they get the diaphragm breathing, 
then try to do it with the pelvic floor, right? And this is all quite slow, but it's, it's because it's deep. So mm -hmm. when we inhale, when we inhale, the diaphragm and the pelvic floor, both, they both lower down and wide. Mm. And you can just imagine those sit bones spreading. And then on the exhale, there's an engagement. There's a lifting in and up with the pelvic floor. And it comes in the same way that the diaphragm does, kind of doming up. So as you can see, I like to use my hands for lots of reasons. Yeah, I sit here and I'm like, I'm doing it myself. <laughs> I'm like, good. Yes. <laughs> Good. Yes. So just to, just to go back, cause it's like, why are we doing this? Um, it can, you can feel like that when you're going really yeah. slow and steady, but some of the reasons for, for this is a, we talked about kind of grounding the nervous system is, uh, tuned to our breath. So when we are breathing here and holding ourselves out of our core, out of our center and out of our root, yeah. then, then our nervous system is going to go into that sympathetic, that kind of fight, flight, freeze mm -hmm. sensation. When we move the breath down into our core, our core is activated. That's it. Doing a thousand crunches is not necessarily activating your core, but your breath, three simple breaths like that consciously, yeah. that will get your engine running. And immediately your pelvic floor is, um, it finds the same rhythm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like this stuff. So episode 71 of my podcast, Mamas in Training podcast is all about the pelvic floor. And we, we go deep into all of this too. And then episode 52, I think it is with Nikki Bergen. We talk about so many things. She had her birth in the pandemic. So we talk about that, but she has a program too called, um, the bell method and the bump method. It's an exercise program. And then we have this information that you're giving us here, which is more, how would you describe the work that you do? It's a movement program. You have online courses, you work with people. There's also a free course, attention, attention, that anyone can, can jump on. But how, how is the work that people do with you? How is that different from maybe, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a workout class or a pelvic, you know, specialist or something? How does that work? Such a good question. Um, I, and I want to get into my core here to answer you. <laughs> I love that. Um, so I don't think of myself as a, a fitness uh, specialist. I, mm. I, I utilize movement as a tool to help you understand your inherent core truths. The thing about how I teach using anatomy, illustrations, touch, and embodiment practice helps you move your body in a way that's super interconnected, integrated, so that you have more inherent strength, or I call it sustain mm. sustainable strength. I'm less interested in you doing, you know, a thousand bicep curls. Yes, that's fun. Yes, it's so fun to like run, to jump, to bike, to play. Um, and I think that the work I do is get you ready for that. Right. For it's any, that and it's that holistic and these are, wellness. Yeah. These are our essential practices that help you celebrate your design, your physiological and biological design. So by understanding your anatomy and, and going, oh my God, so my breath and my pelvic floor, they work together. And we'll talk about how the, the transverse muscles, the abs, the abs work together with the breath. You're going to go, oh my gosh. So it's actually less effort when I put them all together mm -hmm. than if I think about one for this exercise and then this, and then another one for this exercise. The pelvic floor cannot be activated without your breath, period. End of story. Mm -hmm. but, but a few simple breath exercise, conscious breath exercises can activate and strengthen the pelvic floor. Mm. So it's, it's a little, it's a different approach. Yeah. Love it. And it's definitely, um, it's definitely more of, um, an excavation. And, uh, sometimes it's an unlearning of patterns that we've accumulated. Completely, yeah. yeah. And I think it's helpful too, for those who are, you know, first starting, first starting to conceive or who have gone through loss, because you also mentioned um, in one of your notes that you sent to me, you know, this could be a way also that you help heal and recover from loss. Um, so 
I'd love for you to go into that transverse area and then also just touch on how can this apply to people who are in those situations and or people who are in postpartum? How can, how can they heal from this? Yeah, the cool part about the deep core is that it does the same thing no matter what stage of life you're in. And we can use it for, we can apply it differently depending mm. on if you're pregnant or you're postpartum or you're suffering loss or other things. Um, but it is, it's the same thing over yeah. and over and over again. It's consistent for us, which feels really grounding and supportive. Um, so just to talk a little bit about our, our abs, because I know there's a lot of questions about diastasis recti, mm -hmm. even, even pre during pregnancy. I want to say diastasis, the, and let me explain what that is. It's the splitting Oh, wait, I do have a picture. Yes, <laughs> we love the illustrations. Okay, oh, yeah. so these are our rectus muscles. These are the, the, there's four layers of abdominal muscles, right? We have the one I'm gonna explain, the transverse is the deepest, and we have our obliques. There's two layers of obliques on the sides. And then from ribs to pubic bone, we have this, um, these rectus muscles. Those are our six pack muscles. Mm -hmm. And we all love to work those out. But if the other ones below it aren't worked out, I like to say it's like a half baked cake, you know, you mm. just like bite into something that's like gooey. So that's, we don't want to over, you know, we don't want to over exercise that we want to work that in relationship to all of them, which we'll talk about. But this is what a before pregnancy, or, you know, just like a even male abs, they have that kind of linearity to them. Pregnancy, I just want you to see that in pregnancy, there is no choice but to have this split here. And that's what mm -hmm. diastasis is. It's the splitting of our abdominal muscles where this white stuff is our connective tissue. So mm -hmm. it's being stretched apart. That has to happen. So anyone who's like, oh, I don't want diastasis during my pregnancy, don't worry about it. Yeah. Breathe and allow that to occur. Diastasis recti, the, the um, pathology is when post-birth, you have that, t that tissue is meant to heal. If it does not heal because of some excess strain on the body, you have this gap and it can feel very um, disorienting, uncomfortable. When we don't have our core, mm -hmm. it's really hard to know where our strength is. Yeah. So that's what that is. And that's when you can get that coning that you were talking about when mm -hmm. if you curl and you use your rectus muscles, that's these, um, without deeper strength, then you kind of push your organs and that connective tissue out and forward, mm. which doesn't feel good. Yeah. So but transverse. The, yeah. So the transverse abdominal layer looks like this. It, mm. it, it, as I was saying before, it wraps around three dimensionally. This, it wraps around the spine. It's like our inner corset. Mm. It connects to the bottom ribs, just like the diaphragm does, but on the kind of more on the outside connects to the top of our hip bones and into the pubis toward the pubis. Mm. So it's massive. And those are layered underneath. Yeah. What you just showed yeah. us. Yeah. The rectus would be on top running like this mm -hmm. and the oblique muscles run Round diagonally sides. this way and up this way. Um, all, all on top of rectus. Mm. So just like our diet, our breathing muscle, diaphragm and our pelvic diaphragm transverse can only be activated by our breath. <laughs> we cannot squeeze our abs. And, and this is just for those who love their core work and they love to squeeze and hold a squeeze and hold pattern is just that it's a pattern and it's not strength. Squeezing and holding will not allow your organs to mobilize and have their healthy motility to do their job. Mm -hmm. And it can put a lot of pressure on your back. We need a mobile back, right? We need strength, but we need mobility there in the yeah. back. And so if we lock down, A, it's not our transverse doing that. Mm -hmm. It's our rectus and our obliques and our psoas, which is another muscle that runs along our spine, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not our transverse and it's going to lock us up. So mm -hmm. the good news is, is that you just have to breathe and you can get all this going. Yeah. I'm just going to come to a different position so you can see my belly a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so here we have our transverse and it runs all the way to other side of the spine. 
mm. comes around. Sometimes I'll use that band again to show this is not wide enough, but show the kind of this is how it contracts. Corseting, yeah. And widening, yeah. So how we do this is I just put my hands either kind of on the side or in front. Take a deep breath. Feel the belly expand three-dimensionally all the way around. And then exhale. And feel these muscles. They knit together, but they also move backward like you're tightening a belt. Right? Now, if I'm sitting in a chair like this, you'll mm -hmm. notice, and everyone can do this, you can kind of like slump over. Mm -hmm. You'll feel how the belly kind of naturally pushes out. Yeah. That's because the very interrelated relationship of the transverse and the spine. If I don't have that nice long spine with the, those deep spinal muscles that I showed you, if we don't have that, then, then we, have, we, don't, we don't have a transverse either. Right. So I do this in various positions. I do this in sitting. I do this on hands and knees. I do this on the back. Mm -hmm. You can do it in any position. But as long as you're able to get to a nice long spine that's another conversation altogether too what is a <laughs> long spine right yeah but if you just feel the crown of the head and uh, rising up and the pelvic floor dropping below you and you feel their relationship kind of growing this way that's your spine mm -hmm. and then you move that breath through the belly and again we could be focusing we could be doing the same breath and focusing on different parts of the body Mm -hmm. in order to get the desired result. So, and once you know all these pieces, you just breathe and you put it all together, right? So yeah. if we were to imagine this box, like our, our um, deep core is this box, it's a breathing box, right? Mm -hmm. we, it expands, it widens in all directions, and then it all comes back together toward the middle, hmm. right? And so we could do that together. We could just do a couple of rounds of breath, imagining your breath moving down, moving the pelvic floor down, and the belly wide and forward and out. And then as you lift up the pelvic floor, the belly hollows, the diaphragm lifts. Let's do it one more time. And you feel the, the, the lower, um, like, bikini area almost of your, of your front and your pelvic area flatten, too, as opposed to pooch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, you can add to it, you can add curling the head off the ground into a, um, a flexed spine, right, when we do, like, our, cr our cr um, crunch position. Mm -hmm. You can add that, but when you know that you want to sink the abs back, yeah. it's so much harder to lift your head. Yeah. It becomes a different exercise. Yeah. yeah, I've been doing a work similar to this where I take a little ball, those squishy um, little, you know, like, nine-inch yoga balls, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> for the froggy, and I put it down in the low part of my back. So I'm just at a t the tiniest little tilt, right? And I do this. I think of this breathing, and I exhale, and then I just do a little crunch, and I just hold, and then mm -hmm. I breathe in that position <sighs> and flatten and curve and, and, and that corseting idea. And it's so much harder than just like, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It really so harder. And that brings me to one of the reasons why this is so good for um, pregnancy. And we can mm -hmm. talk about it for all the stages of the childbirth continuum. Um, it's really important for pregnancy because with pregnancy, we are doing two things in our bodies. We are expanding. Belly is expanding forward, but also upward. Mm -hmm. I have that picture as well. Illustration coming, illustration. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So upward and outward. And we need to allow that. We need to allow the, the softening of the joints, the widening of the hips, um, that expanding of the belly. Mm -hmm. And we need to counter support it. So that's, that's two things. It's not that I want to just like, oh, yeah, like let everything go. But I also don't want to tighten and hold. Yeah. Right? So there's this dance that has to be um, balanced. 
as we're doing that. So the, the deep core work, you can do your breathing. That's this internal movement, holding any position, holding your hands and knees position, holding a squat position, um, while in a, a warrior two yoga pose, mm -hmm. um, while in, you know, uh, like a balance pose. You can do that in any position and it will really help you feel both the vitality of your movement and your support, the structural mm. support that we really need so badly when we're pregnant. So for means of time, I would just love to see, aside from this breathing exercise, which honestly... I'm preaching to myself right here. I need to like sit down. We all need to sit down for just five minutes. Set your timer for five minutes and just breathe for five minutes. <laughs> Not only will it strengthen your deep core, but it'll lower your cortisol level. It'll make you just kind of take a moment for yourself. Like that's, that's the self-care that we need to really be considering. Jessica, file save. Um, that's talking to me. But um, so aside from that, can you just go over a couple other exercises that maybe we can do on our home, on our own at home to really nurture this? Absolutely. Um, and I just want to say too, the, the five minutes that you give yourself with this, you know, I, I know moms feel like they don't have five minutes to themselves, but if you can give yourself five minutes, even two minutes, mm -hmm. just to breathe into your center, I promise that the rest of the day will feel a lot lighter and a lot. The other thing I want to add spacious. to that too, sorry to interrupt you, is I really think that there's something to like, I often am, am talking to aspiring moms, pregnant women, but I think there's something to be said too for doing this in front of your children. Like Absolutely. neither one of us have children yet, but I can only imagine if you just said, okay, it's breathing time, you know, like with the kids I babysit for, I talk a lot about breathing with them and that's a technique that I use to calm them down. This three-year-old who's amazing, but whew, sometimes we need to bring him down. So what if we had like, okay, it's five minute breathing time. Everyone come on over and you have like your whole five kids, whatever it is. And you sit down and you do it together. Maybe you put on some nice relaxing music. Maybe you light a candle, whatever it is. And you literally say, okay. And you speak it out loud. Your kids Right, Lisa? Yeah, your yeah. kids yeah. will get involved and you'll be able to teach them an amazing tool for self-control, for anxiety, because kids have way too much anxiety than we did in the 80s, right? Yes, you meditate as a family. That's awesome. I think that needs to happen. That's amazing. So anyway, I wanted to throw that in there because I think that it, it, it is self-care and I think that you need to do it on your own, but there's also something empowering in doing it with your family. A hundred percent. I work with so many moms in their homes and I see the difference. Sometimes their kids join us and mm -hmm. it's so fun to see mom's doing Pilates or mom's doing yoga or mom's doing breathing right now. This yeah. is so great. And then if they haven't joined us and mom has, we've gotten to work together. I see her, how she relates with her children after Mm -hmm. I see this like playfulness, this, this just joy. That, and then, and then she'll do, she'll show them something because she had mm -hmm. just done it. And, and they're always so excited. My two and a half year old niece, we do on zoom cause they live in Michigan. So it's, it's um, yoga with auntie Amy. So we <laughs> do that Cute. like every Saturday and she's always just, it's, it's, a, it's the best. She's That's the best sweet. downward dog. So it is it's really <laughs> special and, and valuable to, to, to show your self-care, show your children what self-care looks like. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to show you one exercise that incorporates this deep core breathing um, in the hands and knees position. I like to call it belly pull-ups. Mm. A lot of people have seen this one. I want to make sure that you can see me. And yeah, I'll just, you can see there. Just give my pants, my, so you can see the outline here. So this is a great way to, to do this position. A lot of pregnant women love this because um, it, put, it takes pressure off the spine. We've decompressed yeah. the spine here. Baby has lots of room to move and play around in there. And then we can feel the weight of the, of the abdominals, the transverse specifically, as we do this. Mm. Um, this is also just great because we, if we're always sitting, pelvic floor doesn't get that release as well. So we have some more 
room for the opening phase of the pelvic floor. And you just find that hands and knees position, just like you've done probably all, all in various ways, but hands under shoulders and knees under hip sockets. So I'm like a tabletop. And then I'm going to just notice if my arms are bent, if I'm collapsing into my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And this is a, another reason why this is so great for moms is because arm strength, yeah, <laughs> At period, end of sentence, mm -hmm. right? We, this is what I see so often. And then the neck drops and then we crane the head up. And then mm -hmm. this, this is the position. And not yeah. only is my deep core completely gone, but so is this upper body. So practicing just holding this position is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Then we add the deep core breathing, which makes it a little more complicated. And I'm just going to let the belly expand toward the floor. This is where this is really helpful is I don't want to let the back arch. Mm -hmm. we, all, we often see this, especially with pregnancy, right? Like let's just droop everything. So I want to really stay connected to where my, my spine is and not let this collapse happen when I breathe yeah. in. So we breathe in and then we exhale. We keep the spine long and we don't round. So doing this five or 10 times, 10 rounds is so great. You can also extend a leg behind you and do it with one leg. You can breathe and do it with one arm reaching forward mm. and like that. There's a, a variety of ways you can, you can play with that. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. I love that too, because it, it's not, the weight isn't on your pelvic bone, you know, and it, you're shifting in a different way. So it really activates everything. Absolutely. And then I'm going to, I can show you one more that is more, it's not appropriate for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, I would say for pregnancy that, and then a wall squat, hold, you know, holding your wall squat. Yeah. And doing a few That's rounds of smart. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Add a block between the knees. Amazing. Especially if you are feeling any pubic bone pain, mm. have a block between the knees to keep things um, balanced. Um, but for someone who is either trying to get pregnant, someone who is postpartum or has just um, gone through loss, this one is uh, really nice. Now, if you have any tailbone issues, you might want to cushion up on your mm. mat so you're not on a hard surface. But you'll put your feet in front of you. Again, with the phone, it always feels a little hard That's okay. To we see. can see. Oops. <laughs> Get you back there. Okay. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. That's perfect. All right. So my legs are, are bent in front of me. My heels are on the floor and I'm sitting on the ground. Now, sometimes it's just hard enough to hold this position, right? Mm -hmm. So again, deep core is posture. So if, if this is hard, you can also do this sitting on a chair and just make sure you have, you're sitting on the edge and there's room behind you for this. Mm. It'll be a lot easier than what I'm going to show you, but it's something that you can work toward. Mm. So I have my hands underneath my thighs and I'm pressing my thighs into my hands and my hands into my thighs. So I won't bring my legs with me when I roll back, but I'm gonna keep them grounded. And then I'm gonna find that nice long spine. I'm gonna start with my inhale. And as I exhale, I'm just using my hands to show you my deep core, then I'm going to articulate or move each vertebrae of my spine. I'm, I'm starting with the scoop of my tailbone under and forward toward my heels. And that's rounding me into my sacrum or my lower spine. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to go slow enough until I find the place where um, and you can move your arms. But I'm going to go back to the place where I feel enough, um, like it's deep enough. I've gone farther back. I'm not pooching my belly forward. And I like to do this. I like to push the belly out just to feel that. And, right. then, and then pull it in. And you can see what just happened to my upper body. Yeah. Collapse here, right? And when I move this up and in, there's this effortless Lifting. lift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold for another <clears throat> breath. And then I'm going to use my arms to help me round forward and come up to sitting. So you Love can do that, that four or five times. Really simple. It's a way to also help mobilize that lower back. Excuse me. As you're both building strength for the deep core and um, playing with different shapes of the spine. I love this work that you do, Amy, because it can be used for so many different things, so many different phases of our life. And it's not, 
I think ultimately, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems as though the ultimate goal is to just get connected to that deep sense of you and that deep core, you know, and whether that's because you're going through trauma, because you're going through 2020, because you're going through a loss, because you're pregnant, because you're postpartum, like anything that you are going through, just these small but very intentional movements and breathing practices, I think are kind of what we really have to get back to and can help us really get back to us, you know, and who we are. So as we wrap up here, I'm so, so grateful for your time and for your share. And I can't wait to work more with you. Um, I want to make sure that we mention, first of all, you can just go over and follow and connect with Amy over at Home Body Movement here on Instagram. But she also, you want to mention, um, she offers a free deep core masterclass. And she also has online classes and can work with people. So do you want to just share how people can continue this unbelievable and super helpful work? Absolutely. And I just want to say one thing. Um, just to, just to say, based on what you were saying, that um, these tiny movements and these kind of shape-shifting places are ways for you to, they're not just like an ends to feeling stronger, which they are that, but to knowing who you are and why you have the kind of desires and movement patterns that you have, and then to gently see who you are and change what you need to change, keep what you need to keep, celebrate all the, all that you are. Yeah. So I just I, I just wanted to throw that in, and and um, I have an online course for specifically for postpartum bodies working with the deep core. It goes really deep into each layer of the of the deep core, um, and it's also just a space and time to celebrate your body, celebrate your transformation. There's journal prompts, there's um, discussion Love questions, that. and there's a lot of great stuff. Um, and I also, I do teach one-on-one -on -one sessions, both virtually and here in Brooklyn. Um, and there's just a lot to be gained from where you are. There's a lot of assessing like who you are and where you are right now. And, and your body, um, is going to tell us what you need if we just listen. I also just love, like you shared in the beginning of this, that you're a mama in training yourself. You've gone through loss, which thank you for being open and vulnerable about that you are in this process yourself. So I also think that women who might be listening who are on their fertility journey it might be really nice to connect with Amy because she's been there, she knows it, and you can sort of walk alongside together and encourage each other. So yes, absolutely. Oh, you're such a beautiful soul. I'm so grateful we were able to connect and we're gonna this is not not the end of our of our conversation, but um yeah, so grateful with what you shared today. Thank you so much, Jess. I love your podcast. I love your platform. And thank you so much for all the work you do for mamas. You're welcome. See you soon. Everyone have a wonderful Friday. Reach out to Amy or me if there's anything I can help you with. And I hope you enjoy your weekend. Take care, lady. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.